Welcome back, True Crime Army. I am your host, Margot, and this is Military Murder, a show where I focus on crimes committed by military members and veterans, and sometimes their spouses. But listen, today, I am letting my friends Tabitha and Gretchen take over the airwaves to bring you an episode of their show, Housewives of True Crime. I am a longtime listener of Housewives of True Crime. I, I'm not kidding. So when I got the chance to meet these ladies during True Crime Podcast Festival in 2022, we really hit it off. Of course, to me, it felt like I knew them already since I had been listening to them for such a long time. Now, before you start listening, I wanted you to be aware that the Housewives of True Crime podcast, well, the ladies, they do engage in a little chit chat for the first 10-ish minutes of their show. But once they get into the story, it is all about the case. And both of these women are really good storytellers. With that, let me make way for Housewives of True Crime to tell you the tragic story of Jaina Murray. Her brother is a military attorney and was deployed during the murder of his sister. Her tragedy has been called the Lululemon murder. Now, let's dig in. Merry Christmas, military murder listeners. I am Gretchen and this is Tab from Housewives of True Crime. And we just love Margot, and we're hoping that you're going to love us. So we are dropping in your feed this Christmas week, and we hope you enjoy the episode. Clink, clink. Clink, clink. Hi, and welcome to Housewives of True Crime. Welcome. Welcome. I am Tabitha. Give me Dateline, White Wine, and I'll pick up your kids in the carpool line. The next day, right? Yeah, the next day. Okay. And I am Gretchen. I like White Wine, True Crime, and In Bed by Nine because I have a lot of stuff to do in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) We are Housewives of True Crime. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Welcome. Welcome. Housewives of True Crime up in here. How's he? What's it? Oh, it's good, dude. I was telling Gretchen yesterday, I met an FBI agent and I was talking his ear off. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. How? Tell the people how you met him. Did you like, because I don't really recall. Did you sniff him out? Could you tell? <laughs> well, <laughs> did he look official? Did he have one of those real He'd- sharp haircuts? He did. He did look official. Um, He was a big dude. He was in the FBI SWAT. So, you know, that is like big time. Did he in my fantasy of this encounter? Uh Did he was he wearing like a tight button up where his muscles were like bulging just a little bit? No, because he just retired. So I think he's probably let the bulge go. He's he's resigned to the dad bod. Okay. (laughs) no, he still he still had a good body. He just, you know, had the T-shirt on. He was at a kid's sporting event. So it wasn't. um, Oh, okay. T-shirt. That's not doing anything for me for the FBI fantasy. No, he looked he was a regular dude. He was like, Eh, okay, he was a regular dude. He wasn't, you know, FBI with the badge coming up. Because he's SWAT, he has to be. A, he's a big. He's a big guy, um, and his daughter and my daughter were competing uh, at the same event. So uh, I originally was talking to his wife, and she's a huge true crime fan. And so we got into that, and then it came out that her husband was in the FBI, uh, but he wasn't able to talk about it before he retired. So it was kind of fun. And then she was really into the Murdoch murders, and I was like, "Dude, your husband." of all people knows what's up, you know? Well, yeah, that must be so interesting to be married to someone and you can't talk about what they do. I mean, everybody must think you're like swingers or like you really have something to hide, right? I know. I couldn't do it. I have too much (laughs) diarrhea of the mouth. There's no secrets here. He did say his neighbors sometimes are like, you know, like, why is he, why are you such an asshole? He's like, actually, because I think everybody's evil. Which oh, is yeah. kind of scary because we did talk about that because I said, you know, I I go around thinking that most people aren't serial killers, that most people are good. And not me. Then you have those one off murders. He goes around thinking like you. Mm-hmm. We most get along. We bad. get along great. Yes. Which is scary, right? Like that's scary. No, that I feel very secure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it puts you it, it puts you in a a safer spot for sure. I mean, I think every car is following me. So 
high alert. You know, I'm I'm on high alert most days. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so that was that was a fun conversation. I wish you were there with me because we could have oh, just yeah, I would have loved to pick his brain. No, we uh have just been hanging out around here. My daughter did something kind of fun me. Mm -hmm. She uh she has a friend who it's Ramadan right now. If you didn't know, okay. shout out to all our Ramadan celebrating friends. Yeah. Anyways, so my daughter decided that she wanted to fast like her friend. Oh, which I, which did I she try it? Yeah, she did. But so she said, you know, she eats a breakfast and then she doesn't eat until dinner. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, this never happens that my husband actually took her to school and he w was early. So he took her to go get a donut. So she had like this giant donut, which, you know, I am like the biggest, like no sugar in the morning. I'm kind yeah. of lunatic like that. Yeah. She was like in a pass out. I picked her up and she was like <laughs> falling on me. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? She's like, I didn't eat lunch today. It's Ramadan. I'm like, what oh are you talking my about? Gosh. Crazy. Yeah. I do feel she also has a vegan friend. And I feel so bad for her little friend because my daughter is so is carnivorous vegan? and she is like, I just ask her all the time, why don't you eat meat? It's so good. Have you ever had a hot dog? I'm like, maybe you need to chill out on harassing the poor little vegan about eating the meat. Listen, I'm kind of or she's not going to be your friend anymore. Meat I is good. No, no offense to the vegans out there. Like you do you, but I don't have you had a hot dog. It's good. <laughs> I don't necessarily <laughs> know if your child should be vegan. I, I mean, listen, I'm no expert, so don't, you know, I mean, seriously, don't take me too seriously, but, um, I, I don't know. I think you got, I don't know. I don't think I'm that opinionated know. about people making their childs be vegan because my kids eat dinosaur shaped nuggets. And I think there's probably <laughs> a load of crap in that. So whatever they're For doing sure. is probably better than me. So oh, gosh, I'm okay with it. I don't know. Sometimes. Okay. I, I do have a, like a little bit of a bias sometimes on vegans because I knew a vegan once that ate so much pizza and I was like, but it, you know, with like the fake, the fake cheese, cheese or whatever, yeah. I'm like, that is not healthy. That is like your, your carb loading up oh, like yeah. so much or pasta, right? It's like I, spaghetti is not good for you. Yeah. It's, I know it's complicated. So it is complicated. I think all food is complicated. That's why we're always on a diet. Uh-huh. This case I have for you is real complicated, girlfriend. Ooh, can't wait to hear it. You ready? Uh-huh. All right, Gretchy. Today's case, I'm going to warn you. I know you are... I think everybody's a serial killer, so you don't need to warn me. <laughs> I don't But you, war you want to warn, warn the masses? Be my guest. Yes, I am going to warn the masses that it is a little graphic of a case and... I personally think it's a little scarier than some of them that we do. And there are some triggering parts for people that get triggered. So before you, <laughs> which listen, is every just... fucking one. So sorry. <laughs> these days, these days it is everyone. Yeah. Um, We're all so triggered and violated. Okay. Oh, go ahead. God. Yeah. Well, these sorry. People I just, too. yeah. Okay. This case happened in Bethesda, Maryland, which uh, you probably don't know about Bethesda. I don't you? know it. I don't like the way it sounds. <laughs> I know, but I <laughs> bet you would like to live there. Would it's, I? Um, yeah, the, yeah. Yes and no. It's just north of Washington, D.C. It's considered a suburb of D.C., which I don't think you would like to live in. That Only suburb I want to live in of D.C. is Potomac. Fascinating. Oh, well, listen, I bet you this is like that. Okay. Has a pretty big population, 65,000, and it is fancy. And Ooh. when I mean fancy, I mean fancy. Like you're not finding a house under a million dollars there. Oh. And you probably need to save about 2.5 to $6 million to get a house. Okay. Well, fat chance I'm moving there then. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it's rated one of the top places to live in America. So, La I mean, that's why I'm like, yeah, yeah. 
I find DC and the surrounding areas way too cold for me in the winter. So I am out. Um, but I wouldn't mind visiting because they say there's great restaurants. There's lots of good coffee shops and places to shop, which are all things I love to do. You know, I might have been lying to myself all these years, you know, when I'm like, I think I could handle it. The, these winters somewhere other than no way. here where I would be bundled up because we've had a rainy season in California like no other. Yeah. And she complains every single day to me. I, I can't even take it. I know. <laughs> and it's still like rainy and 60. It's not like rainy and 45. I'm like, just want to sit outside and not on a wet cushion. Could I just sit yeah. outside? Yeah. No, you and miss can't. it. Not for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come to Texas. It's nice right now. Uh, uh. Okay. All right. Well, this case takes place in a store that takes a lot of my money these days and a lot more now that I have a teenager. Can you guess where it takes place? You are not buying Kyla Lululemon. Lulu, Yes, it's Lululemon. <laughs> Listen, I mostly get the knockoffs on Amazon um, and then she saves her money really for, or like if it's do like you, a birthday present. Do the knockoffs have that little symbol that looks like an they upside do. down? Oh my God. They, okay. That is so, so cheese. They have a symbol, but it's, it's like a little round dot, but it has like an H in it. Um, so it's not the same like little Lulu sim- symbol, but I, dude, I wear the pants. I'm wearing them now, the one from Amazon and I love them. And it's, you know, it's hard for me to find a pair of leggings outside of Lulu's that I actually fully love. And okay, send me the link because I busted through another pair of leggings yesterday. Found, luckily this time, my ass was not in public, but my inner thigh was. Oh, dude, it's the Walmart leggings. You got to get rid of those. I got these ones at Old Navy. Same, Trashed girl. Them. Like, yeah. Okay, I told just told you, send me the link. We Listen, could solve this I'm going to send maybe. you the link. I'm going to send you the link because also I've washed and dried these. No problem. Like multiple, multiple times. So they're good. Okay. And they cost like 25 bucks. All right. So back to Lululemon in Bethesda, it's located in an outdoor shopping center. You know, those like cute little squares where like all the stores are attached to each other, but you like walk outside outdoor mall, I guess they're call it. Yeah. This particular Lulu is right next door to an Apple store. So you can get your yoga pants and your AirPods in the same five minutes. I hate an Apple store. So stressful. Why? You always have to have an appointment. Everybody oh, in know. their act that works there is like so smart. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so not funny. with it. <laughs> Just deliver okay. that shit to my house. I don't want to deal with you people. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So on March 11, 2011, two employees of Lululemon were closing up shop that night. 30-year-old Jaina Murray and 29-year-old Brittany Norwood. Jaina was the sales lead for the store and had worked there for a while. She was in graduate school. And so it was like a perfect little job for her, you know. Before Lulu, she worked at Halliburton for five years. Um, Have you heard of Halliburton? No. Well, that so it's so funny because my grandma worked at Halliburton years and years and years ago. So it was so weird for me to see that that name because my grandma has passed, you know. But she had worked there for a long time. And I think maybe even my dad got a job there when he married my mom. What is it? uh, I should know. Is it like a grocery uh, store or restaurant? No, no, no. It's like, I think it has to do with like in the oil industry. That's why I thought you would know about it. Uh, No, I could be wrong. Who knows? Uh, But I, I don't know. I should have looked that up. I know it's a more corporate job. But once Jaina went back to school for her graduate degree, She got to leave the corporate world for a little bit. Jaina was a disco biscuit and people always ask us what a disco biscuit is. And let me describe Jaina and you will know. Jaina was athletic. She was driven. She was getting two master's degrees for business and communications at John Hopkins University. She spent two years abroad in undergrad in Spain. She went to undergrad at George Washington University She had skydived and she had just turned 30 and went bungee jumping and she was about to graduate from college. That to me, dude, is like the epitome of a disco biscuit. She was also cute. So yeah, cute helps. She had it all. And um, 
you know, you just got to have it going on. Like you are on fire if you're a disco biscuit and you have all of those, you know, educational accolades. She's like like an, you're like she that. Like a extra but disco I don't, biscuit. well, I will not call someone a disco biscuit unless I would hang out with them. I think so. All those things I love, right? I, I mean, yes. she went skydiving yes. and I wouldn't go skydiving, but it, it, I it's love impressive. the adventure. Yes, yes. So we so, would hang out, conversate at a bar. Uh huh. Yes. She was actually about to leave Maryland co- to head to one of your favorite places, the Pacific Northwest, to marry her longtime boyfriend. She was fun. She was fierce. And like I said, she was pretty. The other girl at the store that night was named Brittany Norwood. She had actually just gotten a job at the Bethesda Lulu. And I read somewhere that she had been transferred from a Lulu lemon nearby, but I didn't, I could not clarify if that was actual truth, but I think it was. So I'm just going to say it, but put a little disclaimer. Brittany was the Lululemon type. She was athletic. She was energetic. She was friendly. Uh, She was actually from Seattle area, played soccer, and she was good at it and came from a large family with like a lot of brothers and sisters. I think there was like maybe like seven to nine kids all together in her family. So that night, the girls locked up the store and left around 1045. Jaina had parked in the parking structure nearby and Brittany was taking the Metro. But as Brittany started to walk away, she realized that she forgot her wallet in the store. She quickly called another coworker to get Jaina's phone number to call her back to see if she could come open the store for her so she could retrieve her wallet and her Metro card. Jaina, of course, said no problem, swung back around, pulling her car right outside of the store to let Brittany back in. Jaina knew that Brittany was taking the Metro, so she actually gave her her Metro card that night. As they were making their way back to the door to leave, two masked men entered the store. Immediately, the men grabbed part of a clothing rod and other weapons and started pulling the girls back to the back of the store. One of the men was really tall, like over six feet, and one of them was kind of really short around five, five. The men took the girls into two separate rooms and started beating and cutting their clothes off to sexually assault them. Jaina fought and fought and fought to get away from the horror. And Brittany did whatever the attackers told her to save her life. And it worked. So just before 8 a.m., the manager of the Lululemon store, Rachel, comes to open the store and the front door is unlocked and inside the store, it's been ransacked. Money is also mi- missing. She immediately thinks the store has been robbed until she hears a whimper. She freaks the fuck out, by the way, and yeah. runs out the store. Smart. This is, yeah, really smart. This is where she finds a line of people outside the Apple store waiting for the new iPad launch. And a dude sees her frantic and asks if she needs help. She says, yes, you know, my store has just been robbed. I think someone's in there. And he goes in and he finds first Jaina, unresponsive, face down in a pool of blood, and then another woman bound and bleeding and barely breathing. So I have kind of a funny story for you. The other day I was getting ready for church. I picked the perfect red A-line dress to kick off the holiday season. I put the dress on, looked in the mirror, and I felt just blah. I couldn't quite figure out what it was. Did I need a necklace? Maybe some nice earrings? Uh, well... It wasn't until I put on my Honey Love Superpower Brief that I figured it out. I'm not lying. When I put it on, everything just felt better. I felt lifted and snatched while still being able to breathe. And that's the power of Honey Love. Honey Love has revolutionized the bra and shapewear game to give you incredible support and comfort all in one. Say goodbye to the days where you had to wear bulky fabrics that just trapped the heat under all your clothes. Honey Love shapewear is made with targeted compression technology so that you don't feel like you're wrapped in a sausage casing. And I can talk about Honey Love bras all day. 
They're supportive without using an underwire, which is truly magical. This holiday, give the gift of comfort, whether you're giving a gift or treating yourself. You deserve the best bras and shapewear that can help boost everyday confidence. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 20% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash militarymama this month only. Inventory is low and the sale ends soon, so don't miss their best deals of the year. Visit honeylove.com slash militarymama to save up to 20% off site-wide. And after you go shopping, be sure to let them know I sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good. All thanks to Honey Love. He yells for Rachel to call 911, and when emergency personnel arrive, they find a pretty grisly scene. Jaina had been brutally murdered, and Brittany was barely conscious. She was zip-tied around her ankles. Her arms were over her head, zip-tied. And it looked in the crime scene photos to me like something was tied around her neck, like leggings or something. But I couldn't really make it out. Her actual leggings were cut in the crotch area and she was slashed on her forehead and she had cuts all over her stomach. The scene itself was beyond imaginable. There was blood everywhere, like six feet up the wall, all down the hall. I looked at the crime scene photos. It was real, real bad. Um, And it looked like the struggle was real. There was blood even on the emergency door handle in the back of the store. Like one of the girls almost made it out, but then got pulled back. Mm. Authorities immediately tape off everything and um, they take Brittany via ambulance to the hospital and they start questioning everyone. Turns out that the Apple employees closing up shop the night before heard it all. What? Yep. These fools are not like me, Gretchy. They don't call 911 for anything Uh. and everything. They said they heard some rustling, some knocking around sometime after 10 o'clock. And actually on their Apple surveillance cameras, you can see the employees like going up to the wall to listen. One employee said he informed his manager that... Like, should we be concerned? Looks like here, like, sounds like something's going down in that Lululemon store. Oh my gosh. And the manager did nothing. Um, As the yelling and knocking got worse, uh, they eventually did tell a security guard, but security guard thought, "Mm, it's just girls being dramatic. One employee said he heard a woman screaming, and this is what she was saying. Just talk to me. Oh, God, why? Please, God, stop. Help. God, help me. Somebody help me. Oh, God. Okay. Should we just put a PSA out there? Like, see something? Hear something? Say say something? something? Yeah. You know what? I got to be honest. I actually kind of feel sorry for them. Because the Apple I, employees, because yeah, after you hear what because happened. after you hear what happened, then you are just going to kind of never mm-hmm. forgive yourself for not being more of an advocate, right? And, and just calling, forget, you know, your gut is telling you to call and you didn't call. Yes. Like, damn it. I, I should have called. You'll never shake well, that. That's true. That is true. And By the way, it is called bystander effect. It's basically where people, and this happens often, probably far too often, where people are, they they see something, they witness something, and they don't do anything about it. You have have those people that are like, I don't want to get involved, you know? And then you have the people that get involved too much or, you know, want to be involved in a case where they like make shit up, which I'm actually doing a case on next about that. So I I mean, I just think call, call the police, Bethesda, there's no crime. They have, they have nothing to do, but come and check something out. You know what I mean? Like they'd be happy to, and you know what? They could have saved her life. Right. So inside the crime scene, 
police find a lot of weapons that were used like a hammer, a wrench, a box cutter, a merchandise peg, you know, the ones that hold up like the mannequins. Mm -hmm. They also see bloody shoe prints all over the store by a really large shoe, like size 14. While Brittany is getting checked out at the hospital, the investigators want to know exactly what happened. They understand the severity of the attack and they, you know, they approach her very delicately. And Brittany actually remembers a lot. And she's pretty detailed. She says these guys were white. They wore gloves and black hoodies and ski masks. She knew that they were white because they were yelling racial slurs at her and Brittany's black. She said, basically everything I just told you, what happened? That's what Brittany told them initially um, in her first interview at the hospital. She said also that she got away a lot or she thought she got away alive because she just let these men take advantage of her. And she said that Jaina fought back and the attackers didn't like that. She said that her attacker raped her with a clothing hanger, uh, cut her up, tied her up, and left her for dead. Yeah, that's some sick, twisted shit. Really, right? And then there's two of them doing that shit? Like, that's Don't you just think, like, extra. like they, yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the whole Idaho murder thing. It's like, are they, is this somebody who's, like, watching these girls from afar and feels like these Lululemon wearing chicks are... They think something about themselves and they would never give them the time of day. So then they get this opportunity to take out all this aggression on them. Oh, I think there are people like that. Yeah. Everyone's a serial killer. I'm telling you. (laughs) (laughs) So detectives left that day, but then they wanted to interview her again because sometimes when people have trauma like this, they start remembering things. You know, they remember a little bit more as time goes by. Um, So... They brought her into the office um, to talk. And she said the attacker, basically, she remembered that the attacker told her that she was going to live because she was fun to fuck. Oh, she said that the attackers went through her purse and they knew where she lived because she had a bill inside her purse that she needed to pay. She said at one point, they also pushed her down onto Jaina's body and called her a dirty slut. She was super emotional and she seemed like she was really embarrassed when addressing the sexual assault part. The same time they're, you know, interviewing, they're trying to figure out what the heck. Also, Lululemon did not have any cameras in the store. I know it was 2011, but dude, like surveillance, you Those need pants surveillance are like cameras. 200 bucks. Yeah. You need, I would think for shoplifting purposes, they would have a lot of cameras. Yeah. No, they had yeah. no cameras. What they did have, like Apple had cameras and they did have some surveillance cameras around the area and they did see, um, two guys, like a taller guy and a shorter guy on surveillance at one point. And they were like, that must be, you know, these must be the dudes they were walking near the Apple store. Um, but it actually turns out that they were like the bus boys to the re- like a restaurant and mm. they, they were not the guys. But because there's no surveillance cameras, it's like, you know, it's hard to find. Yeah. So police interview Brittany a third time at the station, and this time they wanted to know a little bit more. They asked her if she remembered the man's shoes. Because I told you they had those shoe prints, you know, mm-hmm. the four, size 14 shoe. What they didn't tell her at the time was these shoe prints matched the exact pair of shoes found in Lululemon's bin of shoes for people to try on. Like they don't sell them, but they like, you know, if you want to see how your like pants fit with a pair of shoes, they have some to like wear. Okay. It was weird that the killer also would be wearing those same shoes and there was no shoe prints outside the store. So did the killer like put the shoe on in the store, take it off in the store? That was really weird. They asked Brittany if she knew what type of car Jaina drove. And Brittany said, no, she had never seen Jaina's car. And they asked her if she had ever been in Brit 
or if Brittany had ever been in Jaina's car. And Brittany again said no. That's kind of well, weird. Yeah. Kind of weird. I mean, yeah. I mean, I worked retail. So did you. You'd be walking out to the car, the parking lot together. You kind of know what your coworkers' cars are. And there's not that many employees in Lululemon. I would think you would have a general idea of what somebody drove. I know. But Brittany just started working there. And oh, okay. she didn't drive. So she always took the metro. So I don't know if like she. Never oh, OK. OK. That makes that's right. The, that makes more yeah. sense. OK. But the very next day after that interview, Brittany's brother called the police station and said, you know what? My sister had some memories come back and she needs to tell you about them. So on March 18th, she came back to the station with her siblings, one of her brothers and sisters, to tell the police what she remembered. And she actually remembered being in Jaina's car. Jaina had parked right outside the store and she said the killers were scared that the car was going to get towed away. So they made Brittany move it down the road. They told her that they would be watching her the whole time. And if she did anything shady, they were going to kill her and her whole family because, you know, they knew where she lived because of the bill in her purse. Okay. So Brittany did as they told her. She moved the car. She said she even saw a police officer on her way, but was just too scared because the men said they were watching her. So she parked the car three blocks away and then walked back to the store of horror. I don't, I don't like any of that. I don't, I don't like any of that. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> are you questioning? Like, did you? No, really? I just think like you, if you're in that situation and you see a police officer, just like run, run behind them real quick, <laughs> like hop in the car. If you're getting murdered and you are in a car driving it away from the run murderers. into the police officer. Yeah. Drive <laughs> it into that something. something. Yes. So by this time, a week had gone by and a lot of evidence was gathered. Um, and, you know, when she came by to tell them about this moving the car story, they had already gathered a bunch of shit and they were not buying Britney's story. Okay. They actually believed that Brittany was the killer and had conjured up this elaborate story to hide her despicable actions and make her a victim. You see, Brittany actually got caught stealing a pair of leggings that night by Jaina during a bag check. Oh, I remember that. That's what they do. That's like standard retail. Yes. Got open up your bag. Everybody's got to, you know, show what they got. Right. And Jaina had a pair of leggings in there. Brittany also was suspected of stealing shit out of all the girls' bags since she's been there. So they needed to catch her in an act of stealing. And right when Jaina left the store, she called Rachel, the manager, to tell her, we got this bitch. I caught her stealing. Mm -hmm. Also, police had found out that Brittany had a long history of stealing and a lot of people called her a klepto. Mm -hmm. She even got kicked off her soccer team from, for stealing her teammate shit out of the locker room. So Brittany basically called Jaina back to the store to silence her. And once inside, she beat her to death with over 331 wounds. Jaina clearly was a fighter. Yeah. And that is what the Apple employees heard. Jaina was begging for her life, telling Brittany that they could talk about it and to stop. She even at one point did make it to the emergency exit and her bloody handprint was found on the door and Brittany must have pulled her back. Wow. Examiners believe that she was alive for most of the beating until Brittany finally stabbed her in the back of her neck with a that mannequin pin that would instantly kill her. Then after Brittany's savage rage, she got into Jaina's car to move it, sat inside of it for a real long time. That's why they found blood of Brittany's and Jaina's in that car. That's how they knew that Brittany had been in it. She then returned to the scene to make it look like a robbery gone wrong. She put on those big shoes. She walked around She knocked over some stuff. She stole some cash. She must have stashed it somewhere along the way when she was moving the car. 
Um, and then she finally zip tied herself. Um, also all of the weapons and the zip ties were stuff that was in the car or in the store. Yeah. So what these like robbers come in with nothing. They just like, we're like, we're going to use whatever Lululemon has to. So she made up the whole chicks. like rape with the coat hanger or, you know, whatever she said, craziness. She said, that's what they did to her. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Listen, police. Because yeah, I was that's thinking, crazy. well, yeah, I mean, it's crazy, but I was thinking they wouldn't, you know, so did she cut the leggings? She did. Because I was thinking a rapist would just take them off. Yeah. Not, not cut them. Cut the crotch, cut the crotch and, out. But that also pisses me off. Like you want these fucking leggings so bad. You're willing to steal them, be a thief. And then you and cut them just, up. And then you cut them. <laughs> Probably because she took a, a few others to stash them with the cash she had. Uh, police found bite marks on the zip ties, saliva also of hers on the zip ties that were tied around her hands. They also found it very strange that her arms were over her head like this zip tied because you could just hold them right in front of you. Yeah. Like when they found her laying, they were like, why did you keep your hands above your head? You could just pull them down. It, they didn't like that when right. they found her. Um. Before she zip tied herself, she took a razor blade to her face. Like her wounds were really superficial. You know, it was just like a box cutter that she like sliced up her face and sliced up her stomach. She cut her pants. She also cut Jaina's pants to make it appear as they both had been sexually assaulted. And the reports from the hospital and the autopsy reports indicated no sexual assault on either woman. Right. Brittany's brother, um, actually once they like, were like, girl, we're not buying what you're selling. Um, Brittany's brother went into the interrogation room and was like, okay, listen, I lie. Let me tell you how to lie to get out of this shit. And, um, she was like, is there cameras in here? Are they recording? Yes, us? there are. And he was like, no, there's not any. I don't see any cameras. It's like, dude. There's, There's always, always cameras. The cameras. There's yeah. always cameras, unless you're in Lululemon in 2011. So they arrested her right there. And they, you know, I mean, they tried her. And um, of course, she was found guilty. There's no question that she did this. Um, and she was sentenced to life in prison without parole. I, she's tried to appeal, but she's not getting out, dude. She is, she, she is evil. She is like the epitome of evil to me. Like, how could you do that? Yeah. You know what? It makes me think, though. You know, Jaina is who she murdered, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Jaina saying, you know, we've got this bitch. She was like onto her. She knows this chick is, you know, a liar, manipulative, all this stuff. Yes. Right? Yes. Y you have to have when you are dealing with a crazy person you have to have somebody else there i know you know i know i know and then she rose her to get her back to the store i mean and that is honestly not good. jana jana is she was like buff like she and britney's tiny i mean I'm sure, I mean, if you see the crime scene photos, you'd be like, holy shit. I mean, they, they fought for a while. I just don't know how she, like, Jaina couldn't get out of the door. You know, like, how did you, how could you not have run? Like, I don't know if at first she just hit her over the head and just stunned her enough to, I don't know. Like, how come you didn't get out? <sighs> her yoga pants were on too tight. It was cutting off her circulation. I don't know. So sad. That story is like, I could not. I'm like, holy cow. Okay. Holy cow. Teach your children. D don't be alone with crazy people. I know. But you don't think that this. You don't want to. You don't want to. Girl listen, is going to. You don't want to confront somebody crazy. By murder yourself. you. I'm all for confronting she, crazy people. I don't people. even think she confronted her. I think she just was like, what are those You're leggings best. doing in your, in your bag? 
Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, she she was, they did know she was cuckoo bananas because they were waiting to to catch her in the act. She had like yeah. stolen the girl's perfume out of her purse. Like she was one of those. Like she went yeah. through the girl's purses in the in the lunchroom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my daughter had um was just telling me somebody stole uh like one of those wa- Stanley water bottles. One of the girls like took mm-hmm. it and was like, Oh, I didn't know it was yours, or I found it in the lost and found or something. And I was like, Kylie, you gotta be careful with those. If you're stealing at 12 or 13, your friends are stealing at that age. Yeah, no boy now. Might be a problem. Yeah. No boy now. I think I told this story on Patreon, but um, when I was like 18, I was, I had a guy roommate who I am still Mm -hmm. friends with. And he was dating a girl who lived at a sorority house at San Diego State University with a girl that I was friends with. And every time he would bring this girl around, she was super fucking bitch to me. And other than her being a total bitch to me, he thought she was great. And so one day he was like, (laughs) I mean, not to toot my own horn, but he's like, everybody likes Gretchen. Like, what? Why don't you like Gretchen? (laughs) You know? (laughs) What'd she she say? She said, because her friend, who I thought was my friend, okay? Yeah. Yeah brought Gretchen over to our sorority house and Gretchen stole from all of us. We were all missing shit from oh our, God. from our rooms after Gretchen left. Well, it was no, a friend. No. It was the friend. Yes. And she has quite the history turns out of oh, stealing no. from everybody. And she blamed she it on just you. blamed it all on me. <gasps> I mean, for all I know, there's still a bunch of girls in San Diego that think I stole their shit. Dude, they like listen to this podcast. They're like, there's that bitch that stole our shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But my my uh, roommate did clear it up. Like, no, that's that's not her jam. Yeah, no way. You can you can't even lie, girl. Yeah. So I'm not stealing somebody's stuff. And I can yeah. only imagine if you did and somebody like can you, you imagine you like rampaging through all the rooms? Yeah. <laughs> no. Like, no. 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 But I know people like I've like even my mother in law was telling me one time, like they would have parties all the time and shit would be stolen. Like everybody would be missing something out of their purse and like they're like where all the people put their stuff. And it was like one of her friends. Yeah, that's so weird. It's like, remember that on Dirty Dancing, the old lady Uh (laughs) steals shit? (laughs) By the way, I was listening to Dirty Dancing today. I just love it. I could have robbed you blind so many times. Back when Tab was living in L.A. and we used to get together and go out to dinner, I'd always borrow one of her fancy bags. And, you know, she's always got a couple dollar bills left over. Yeah, I do. (laughs) <laughs> I'm always like, Ooh, I'm rich. I'm yeah. always like, John's like, do you have any cash? I'm like, maybe I have 20 <laughs> stuffed in one of these bags. Somewhere. Guaranteed. Good for a 20. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, if you want more of us hit up our Patreon or subscribe here on Apple right now, if you listen on Apple, Also, there are some, if you guys listen on Spotify, there are some fun questions and we would love to hear from you. If you listen on there, uh, please rate and review us if you haven't already, unless you really don't like this episode and then you can just, um, eat a dick, go to another podcast. (laughs) I don't care, but just don't review us if you (laughs) hate us. Um, and if you want more, um, of us, you can go to YouTube. We also are on TikTok and uh which Gretchen likes to call Dick Cock. I do. Uh and um if you want are on our private Facebook page, it's Housewives a True Crime Group. And if you're into dieting, we do have a kind of keto or whatever works for you group. Uh Gretchen's on some crazy shit right now, but it's working. I'm down 15 so, pounds. So that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, don't have to hear her complaining anymore. No, I'm just kidding. 
Oh, I'm going to complain because I'm hungry. <laughs> Turns out that's the key to eating weight, losing weight. Losing weight, being hungry. She's yeah. also she's also tired AF. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And I think that's it. Uh, we have a good Patreon coming up. So seriously, go there if you want more of us. It's on Thursdays. So you get one episode on Monday and then one on Thursday. I think that's all. Okay, clink, clink. Okay, clink, clink.